everybody, I've got Stephen Robertson from My Money here. Um, just because most of you are asking us all the questions about finance and cash, which is the main problem. Um, I, I organized this interview with um, uh, Stephen um, to go through some of your questions. So, hi Stephen, thank you for your time. Um, one of the um, main thing is at the moment with the small businesses, medium businesses is the cash and the finances. That's a main worry that, like, you know, they can't sleep at night and they're um, all worried they can pay the lease, they can pay the creditors and um, everything else that they have to pay. What is your general advice for the businesses, what they should do to make sure they manage through um, this um, time? Yeah, great question, Brad. And uh, I know it's stressful. People are losing sleep. I'm getting all kinds of calls from lots of different clients and even people I've never dealt with before as they refer their friends and some of the um, clients, it's a surprise who gets made redundant in senior roles. So I think the impact is a lot wider than people realize. Uh, the first, first thing is to make sure that you actually have an accurate um, view of your numbers and where things sit and a lot of people don't because they've been uh, running along business has been going well cash keeps flowing um, and it's a bit like the percentages of people that write down their goals and set specific targets it's you know very low so unfortunately a lot of people are kind of cruising in the dark and now this has brought a whole bunch of issues to light so my first point would be you need to um, if you don't have a great accountant you need to get a hold of one and you need to know exactly where your um, business is. It's a bit like driving a ship and having the dials and all the dashboard in front of you and knowing what, you know, what your oil pressure is, knowing how much fuel you've got in the tank, knowing how far the distance is, knowing even what direction you're going in. All of those things are metaphors for what you should know in your business. So where is your business plan for the last year? Where's your business plan for the next 12 months? And where more, most importantly, the number one, you hit it right on the head at the start was cash. Uh, how much cash is in the bank? And do you have a working live cash flow forecast document that you can update um, daily with the money that comes in and the money that's owed to you by your creditors, sorry, your your debtors and your creditors and, and what terms are they on and can you make arrangements? So all of that is a discussion for after you know where you're currently at and you've got some accurate numbers. And if you don't have them, um, the good news is the business regional partners, which is part of the local government, have um, recognized that people are in this situation. So they have made an available grants for businesses to access advice from business mentors and accountants and, and to go through this so they can get an accurate picture of, first off, where they are, um, if they're bleeding money anywhere, how to stop it, what to do with all your responsibilities, what to do with all your customers. And then if you need to pivot and change your strategy and, and you know, belts and braces. Um, uh, personally, I've done the same thing. I've reached out to the Ice House. I've got a very experienced mentor walking me through this process. So I'm not just talking theory. Um, it's a live situation and we're fortunate to be in a strong position, but a lot of clients aren't. And I, I, I like to think if I'm not physically actively doing this myself, then I can't talk with any authority because it's just theory. So I've dived into this process so that I've got an indication of what, what they're looking for and, and what you need to have ready and available. So for example, your latest financial statements, if they're not done, even in draft form, that's the first thing you need to do. And then secondly is that cash flow forecast with your opening bank balance at the front, what money you can accurately forecast is gonna come in from um, the people that owe you and then what your obligations are. Obviously the big one everyone's talking about right now is commercial rent um, and your utilities. Another handy hint someone said to me is if you've got credit cards with automatic payments that go out, just cancel them and get them reissued and all those direct debits that you don't know about and kind of slip through. It's all the, all the uh, surplus cash needs to come back into your bank account right now. That's true. And um, yeah, regional partner is good. We uh, are part of the regional partner network and uh, they give $2,000 for doing business continuity plan uh, yeah. for TrueWise Advice. 
So we're helping uh, lots of our clients and uh, lots of other businesses to put that plan together to see how that's going to look like and how they can make sure that the business continue trading and have cash. And we build different scenarios to see where the cash is going to uh, dry and when they need finance if, um, and when, what they have to do. So um, that is very important. Uh, great advice. Um, so what are the banks doing? What are the helps that you've seen the banks giving to small businesses um, now? Yeah, um, again, the government have stepped up and tried to free up um, the bank's ability to help people. So they uh, first first off the first cab off the rank was dropping the official cash rate to 0.25 and giving an assurance that it would stay that way for 12 months. So that should lower the interest rate, which lowers the cost of working capital. Um, each bank is, it's a bit like whenever the Reserve Bank issue a new set of rules, they all interpret them individually according to their own policies and credit uh, guidelines. So each bank has information specific to COVID-19 responses on their website. That would be the first place I would take a look, but do not just call your banks directly because what we're finding is they well number one um, they are scrambling to work out what their policy response is uh, number two the staff are still being allocated into those areas number three the call centers are absolutely overloaded so your chance of getting through is i mean that's going to add stress to you it's a bit like you know calling a telecom company and, and trying to get a fault fixed which i experienced last night um, and they to counter that they said well here's a form fill it in and come back to us so it's like anything um a, a good quality proposal or application for help is your best chance of a great outcome and that should be prepared by either the likes of your accountant or a financial advisor like myself who knows how to put that together now i've got the advantage of having been a commercial banker for a number of years in a uh, one of the main trading banks so i've sat on the other side of the fence i understand the credit criteria i know how they risk grade any application for funding and whilst the government are providing um, government backed loans it's still shared responsibility between the bank and the government and the bank will still use their credit criteria in making that decision even though the government is backing a, a, a strong percentage of that loan. So um, it, it's the old story, be really well prepared. And, and when you're going to approach the bank, it's best to have all those documents, you know, that current business plan, that current cash flow forecast, the latest financials. And, and to be able to talk to with some degree of intelligence, what's the impact of COVID-19 on your business, what your business is doing about it, um, the first question the bank's going to ask you is what support have you reached out for? Have you applied for the wage subsidy? Have you received it? Have you applied for the self-employed one? You know, if not, why not? Have you spoken to your accountant? What did they say? When was the last time you had a quality conversation with them? What is your tax up to date? Have you spoken to the IRD? Um, all of these things come into play and that regional business partner support is, is not just designed for cash flow. The, the government's been switched on and they said, right, it's actually business continuity and that big word that we all need more of, resilience. Um, and then it's cash flow and forecasting. And then it's human resources because you need a plan to um, manage your staff and keep them keep the good ones and, and try and minimize the damage in that area because they're all worried about their job and their security and paying their mortgage and you know keeping food on the table as much as we are. And then it also covers health and well-being and stress. So it's quite a good wraparound designed to w help people through this. And I was talking to Brad before about I liken this to a ship in a storm and you're the captain and you need to be able to um, talk to the lighthouse, which is the safe and secure guide who can see further than you are and get updated information, have a, have a direction on your compass you're going through and and keep a, a watch on those gauges because things will shift quickly in this environment yeah they do um, they do very fast and you have to be prepared and uh, resilient and agile at the same time yeah. um, so we get lots of question about the government backed loan um, okay. what are the interest rates what are the criteria who do you think 
um, should go for it and you know what are the good scenarios to make sure that they're going to get it and um, would you be able to help them yep okay so that, another great question and it, there's quite a bit of detail so i'll just talk to the high level um effectively the government backed loans uh, for businesses with a turnover of between 250,000 and uh, right up to 80 million. And the loans can be up to half a million dollars for a period of up to three years. So bear that in mind, it's the, you do have to repay it. It's not just a, a holiday or you know a grant, it's actually a loan. Um, the rate of interest you pay is very much determined by which bank you're talking to. And I've watched a number of uh, webinars that different banks have put out and ice house and business mentors and you know how to deal with your bank um, and some of the banks are offering cheaper um, overdrafts um, it's cheaper credit cards all the rest of it but you, it should be the right structure of finance for the purpose of the funds and this is where people get tripped up they go oh well, i'm just going to borrow this for three years but if the life of the asset or whatever you're doing with the money is shorter than that you, you try and match the purpose of the funding to the length of the the benefit if that makes sense so um, there are certain things that these government backed loans are designed to do and the short version is it's operating costs it's 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 staff it's it's immediate costs like rent and um, overheads and that kind of thing and there are some specific things that's actually stated in the um, the government support that it won't cover and they don't want you spending money in certain and certain industries are not going to be supported in this. So there's a bit of, bit of political interference as well. And that's why you need to get good advice before you just go and submit, you know, ring the bank and go, I need help. And it's for this. You, you might shoot yourself in the foot if you're not well prepared and you don't know what those exclusions are. And the, the website business.government.nz has, um, it's constantly being updated daily with the latest information and it's a good resource also just for the simple things of what can I do under shifting from level four to level three alert levels and, and guidelines for staff and health and safety. And this is why um, you need to keep close contact with your accountant or advisor because each step opens another raft of obligations and responsibilities and guidelines that you need to front foot. So, you know, I've known people who are working 12, 13, 14 hour days just keeping up with all the changes uh, on top of trying to run business as usual and keep clients happy. So it's a pretty stressful time and it's good to see that the regional partners have recognized that and health and wellness is one of the four key areas that they've provided funding to get advice and support around. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so if somebody wants uh, and needs help um, to deal with the bank, um, how could you help and how, how they can reach out to you? Um, I, my website is mymoney.net.nz and um, direct line to me, which diverts to my mobile, is 0937744433. Um, I'm obviously not going to prepare a forecast. I can help with that, but the, the bank will want it prepared by uh, usually an accountant um, because they want someone with experience um, who is recognized as your advisor um, who knows you has has helped prepare it because like everything a forecast is based on the assumptions that have gone in behind those numbers and uh, if you can't talk to them with any degree of um, research and and just common sense it makes it hard for them to rely on what you're saying so we definitely help can help put that together and, and give you some guidance around it but we will be working with your other professionals um, I've got other lawyers and accountants calling me, sending me updates, saying this is how you negotiate with your landlord, for example, for your commercial rent, or this is how you talk to your staff, this is what you need to know about your obligations with the wage subsidy, how to even how to treat the wage subsidy in your, you know, for example, in your zero, you know, what, what do I do? Is it taxable income? No, it's not. Well, how do I, how do I deal with that? So this is where things are very fluid. And um, whilst it's great to have all this government support, it's you, you need to navigate and you need to keep in contact with the people that are, it's their job to keep on top of what's happening and how to deal with it. Cool. Certainly you find your friends and um, your reliable partners throughout the hard times. So that, that counts a lot. So 
is all trying to help each other and make sure that we're coming out of this um, fine. And we're going to look back to this and say, okay, that was a hard time, but it's come and gone. And thank you for your time, Stephen. And um, and hopefully we will have more of these um, informative um, interviews for all our clients and contacts. And uh, thank you for your time. You're welcome. Anytime you need. Thank you. Yeah.